Okay, welcome to another iPad painting tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm gonna paint a mountain sunrise with some really nice vibrant colors. As usual, I'm using the app Procreate. You can use different apps on different tablets and probably follow along with the process and come up with something quite similar, but I am using Procreate and as such, I've opened an A4 default canvas size that's within the app. And if you want to follow along with the exact brushes and colors, the brushes I'm using today are the soft brush within airbrushing, not the ones lower down, but the ones higher up. So the soft brush, the medium brush, and then we'll experiment a little bit with the brushes for the grass, and we'll probably use the calligraphy brushes and the water pen. In terms of the colors, I've already pre-selected some colors in this section. Each one of these colors has what's called a hexadecimal code attached to it. So if you go to the value section here, you'll see a space that has an area that you can type in the codes. The codes are in the video description for this video. So each one of these colors has a code. You type it in here, press enter each time. The color will appear up here and you can tap it into your own palette and create it yourself. Alternatively, there is a link also in the description that takes you to my Patreon page and you can download the whole color file for free. In addition to that link, you'll find links to my TikTok, my Instagram and my Facebook group. And specifically the Facebook group has 30 plus thousand members where people share work, their work and give feedback to each other. And it's a really great supportive community. With all that said and done, let's get started. So on our A4 canvas, we're gonna to go to our colors. We're gonna pick this first blue color on the top row. And I'm just gonna drag it into the background to eliminate the white background. I'm gonna go and create another layer. Go back to my colors and pick this light blue. Back to my brushes, airbrushing, soft brush. Put it really quite high, it's about 30%. 100% opacity and I'm just gonna start bringing in just a big pale blob over onto this side, it doesn't need to be any detail whatsoever. And then I'm just going to add another stripe at the bottom of that underneath it. Then I'm gonna to go to my adjustments, Gaussian blur, and merge it in, blur it in until we get to 100%. Then I'm gonna create another layer, go back to my colors, and I have this color, which I'll show you on the color disc, is quite a lot warmer. It's really an orange yellow. So with this yellow, I'm going to stay on the soft brush, but I'm going to put it down to about 15%. And just a little bit above the halfway point, I'm going to draw a line. Again, it was at 100% opacity. And I'm going to go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur again, and blur it in. And we'll do it to about 50%. Now with these two layers, I'm actually going to merge them together by pinching them together. Then I'm gonna slide them across and duplicate them. And it's just made them a bit more powerful, a bit stronger, and I think that's working better. We'll create another layer, go back to our colors, and we've got this fourth color along now, which you can see here is an orange, but it's almost a grayed out version of it. Stay on the soft brush, reduce it down to about 8%, and significantly reduce the strength down to about 15%. And specifically over at this side, I'm just going to start bringing in gradually, and you can probably hear a few taps, and I'm bringing it in just very subtly and very gradually. And I'd rather do this manually rather than using the soft focus this time, or using the Gaussian blur rather, just because I think some of the texture that might start to build up is actually gonna to work to our advantage and, and be a better way of doing it. But we only need a subtle amount anyway, so that will do really isn't a lot. And then I'm gonna reduce it down even further to about 4%, stay at the 15% opacity, and just have just one or two things starting to appear a little bit on this side, but hardly anything, just like that. Then I'm gonna create a new layer, go back to our colors, and we've used the first four. So now we're gonna start adding some cloud features. I'm gonna to go to the last color along, actually, which is this palest color. We'll stay on the soft brush, we'll turn it down, to top end of 2%, we'll keep it low on the opacity at 15%, and I'm just gonna start adding some points of texture. And again, I'm doing it in a very tapping motion. I'm just creating some broken little sections here. I don't want them to all start to merge together. I want to keep them quite separate. Now, now that isn't to say they don't vary in size, so I'm doing some collections that have a bigger size, but then other times then they'll break apart and be smaller amounts. And 
then I can just do some reaching out into this section and bring a few over here as well, not too many. Then I'm going to increase the size of the brush up to 5% and then just very lightly, it's still on the 15% opacity, I'm just going to introduce a real more hazy version of the same kind of thing, but I'm pressing very lightly. So sometimes, you know, you could have it at 15% opacity and you can press quite hard and you really see that brush mark. Other times I can press lightly using that same opacity and you can barely see it and have to build it up gradually. So it's a combination of the two things. I do typically have quite a light hand when I'm applying textures. So bear that in mind, whatever the opacity is, then you, I'm probably going to be pressing lightly. So I'm just adding a bit more of this texture over the side maybe just a little bit over here as well. Then I'm gonna create a new layer. I like to keep things on separate layers, it does help. We'll move back in one to this color and you can see it is almost red, but it is very pale and almost grayed. And we'll reduce it down to the 3% size. We'll keep it at the 15% opacity. And we can just start to, in addition to the pale color, start to add some of this color as well. Add it into the mix. So we're getting combinations of these two tones now, these two colors, but I'm also gonna start ramping up some of the texture over this side a little bit more as well. Now, if you've not done many skies before, then you know they are quite tricky initially. Sometimes you just need to practice it more. And it is about just learning to see the possibilities and see the potential within the textures and the, the shapes. But that's something that comes with time. So don't worry too much if you're struggling a little bit. So that's been very subtle so far. So we're gonna create a new layer, go back to our colors and we've got two darker colors now. So I'm gonna go for the blue one first. So on the first one of the four and we'll keep it at the 3% size, but we'll put it up a little bit in strength. So the 20%, not much, but a little bit. And we don't really want to go too much lower than about a third of the way. But I'm gonna start creating some points of texture. Again, very much a tapping motion. There'll be some sections where it clumps together and then there'll be gaps between them as well. reduce it down a little bit to the lower end of 2%. And I can really then just go in there and add some even smaller textures around the edge. I'll just zoom in a little bit, really start to tidy up some of those edges and the little details. It's the kind of thing you could spend hours just really fine tuning and really getting into. And often this is exactly the kind of thing that I would do. I do tend to keep it a little bit vaguer for the benefit of the tutorial, but typically it's the kind of thing that I would quite happily get carried away with and just spend a whole evening playing around with texture. It's just the kind of thing that I enjoy really. So alternate between that smaller size and then back up to the top end of 2% and I'm gonna move over to the side, start adding some more of that texture over here. Again, I'm keeping it quite broken to begin with. Just a smattering of dots almost and then another and then maybe they can collide together and we can start to just merge them together, get bigger, bulkier sections of this cloud as well, where they all start to join up. Good thing with this kind of thing is that clouds never stay the same. So there is no right and wrong. It's just what happens to look, you know, authentic, what it looks believable. But you could look at this same section of cloud, give it a couple of minutes and it will have pretty much changed completely. So there's so many variations that of shapes that it can take, so you don't need to worry too much. I strongly suggest that you don't try and copy the exact shapes that I'm showing you. I'm just showing you the overall technique and then you can come up with your own kind of forms. And then I'm just going to increase it up to about 4% and maybe just do some hazier, less defined sections of this blue up here as well. Because what tends to happen is as the cloud gets closer to you, it starts to become fuzzier, less 
clear edged, like a softer focus version of it. It's, it has a strange quality as it gets further away, it gets like a sharper, cl more clearly defined outline. But as it gets closer to you, you get more of a fuzzy edge to it. And I'll just create some more over here too. I'm going to alternate between that and the other color, which is this purple. I'll stay in the same layer, and I'm going to just add some of that purple to the underside of it, predominantly, because we're going to have some warmer colors as we come further down towards that horizon. So we want some slight warming up of the underside of that cloud. It's going to be merging with the sun. I just increase it up to the 4%, just add a little bit more softening over to this side, get some more bulkier sections filled in, and then it gets a little bit softer focus down here maybe. Reduce it down again to the 2%, and just at the the lower section. In fact, I'm going to turn the opacity down again as well. I'm going to put it even lower to about 10%. I'm just in some of these areas here. I'm going to, because it's going to pretty much disappear into the sun. So I want to just soften some of the edges as I come along into this section. So I can have it breaking up and then disappearing into the sunlight, which clearly I haven't done a sun yet, but when I do, it will start to make more sense of that. Now remember, you've got another separate section of cloud up here, so it's a different shape. So the underside of that might get some of the purple as well. When you've got a clearly defined separate shape, you want to add perhaps a little bit of that purple. And back to the blue color, this first color on these four, we're at the 2% and maybe back up a little bit to the 20%. And again, just start to clearly define some of these blue shapes. Perhaps I'm going to turn it down to the lower end of 2% exactly, so that we can define some of these shapes again. I'm going to keep it quite loose, really, for the sake of this tutorial, but just a little bit of refining can go a long way. Just some breakaway little sections and tufts. You can smatter those around as well. Just here and there. Okay, I'm going to create another layer, go back to our colors. I'm going to think about adding the sun now. So I'm going to use this white color first of all, and I'm going to switch brushes to the medium brush. I'm going to put it at around 6% size and 100% opacity. And I'm just going to decide where to put my sun. So I'm going to put it about a third of the way. So we're thinking in terms of the rule of thirds. I'm going to put it about here. Just tap it a couple of times like this. Then if we create another layer, I'm going to put underneath the white that we've just created, and I'm going to go back to my colors. And I'm going to go to this second color here, which is this yellow. Staying on the soft brush again, I'm going to put it up to about 15% size and keep it at about the 20% opacity. I'm just going to go to that point. I'm going to add a few dots of that color. Keep tapping and you can see you're building up that yellow color. I'm then going to put it up to 40% size. Again, tap a few times into that color, a few more times. And you really can start to see the radiating yellow color now, which is really helpful. A few more times until you're more satisfied with it. Back to the colors, this even more intense yellow. And I'm going to create a new layer for that. So I'll put that underneath the two layers we've just created. And with an even bigger size, at about 50%, we're just gonna tap that underneath a few times. Now, what you'll notice sometimes is you start to get these artifacts within the image, these rings. So if you don't like that, which I don't, I wanna get rid of, so I can go to my adjustments, my Gaussian blur, and I can just blur it in a little bit, and that will help. So I'll put it to about 50% blur, that gets rid of some of that, and go back to the yellow one. Again, adjustments, Gaussian blur, and blur that in. I don't need to go as far with this one to get rid of that, so about 30% certainly gets rid of it. And then I'm gonna to go to the layer eight, adjustments, bloom. With the bloom, I'm gonna put it up to 100%. First of all, it really intensifies the sun, but then I'm also gonna duplicate that layer. And on the layer underneath, so 
So we've got two versions, the lower version of that layer. I'm going to go to my adjustments, Gaussian blur and blur it in. So I'm going to keep blurring it in to about 20%. Go back to my layer, duplicate it. So again, it's really softened it in and you can always just duplicate it again until it continues to soften it in, which is quite a nice effect. So we've got three versions of that white sun now and we can pinch them all together so that we reduce the number of layers. But that also means we can slide and duplicate it and really impact the power of it. Now on this duplicated version, again, I'm gonna to go to my Gaussian blur, and blur it in to about the 40% and we're gonna leave it there for now. We'll come back and we'll, we'll do additional things, but I'm quite happy with the level of additional glow and those kind of other things that it's added. So I'm gonna take all of those sun elements I'm going to merge them all together and I'm just going to put them underneath the cloud layers that I've created like that. Now I'm going to obscure some of the colors here later on but for now that's a good start. So in order to continue we're going to have to go to the top layer and create a new layer, go back to our colors. This time we're going to use this second row of colors starting with this one on this end. We're going to switch to the medium brush. I'm going to have it at around 5% size, and I'll keep it 100% opacity. I can use other mediums, other ways of softening this in, which will work. And at about the halfway point, I'm just going to bring a bumpy shape across to about here, and we can just fill this in a little bit. We're not going to notice this because we're going to have other things obscuring it anyway. In fact, that's gone too close to the sun, but it doesn't really matter because we can just go to the eraser and just reduce it back a little bit. It's only really this section that I'm wanting to create anyway, so that's working just fine. Create a new layer on top, back to our colors. We'll go for the second color on the middle row. We're gonna stay on the medium brush or medium airbrush, 5% size, 100% opacity, and we're gonna do pretty much the same again, but just a little bit lower. To about there. Again, we might as well just fill it in. Create a new layer. Go back to our colors. We're going to use the third color in and same settings, 2%, uh, 5% size and 100% opacity. We're going to bring this in and have a spike up here maybe. And we can just fill this empty area. Maybe we'll have it peeking up here as well. And with this layer, I think what I'm going to do with it is actually turn the opacity down a little bit. I'm going to turn it down to about 90% and I'm going to create another layer and then I'm going to use the same color, which is the fourth color in, and I'm going to just create another section that just goes in front of it. And I think that's what I need to have here in fact. I think that's going to work better and then again we can just fill this in. Back to our layers, create a new layer, back to our colors and we've got this color which is pretty much like a brown color and we're going to bring this lower down, have a section that maybe rises there, something like this and then fill this in. I mean you can actually just drag the color into that section and it fills. Sometimes you'll see a little gap between that so you can just hold the pencil down, drag it across until it seems to fill that gap. Any little anomalies you can just fill in. Now, it looks a little bit lopsided over on this side, so I'm gonna to have to go back through the layers in order to figure this out. So, if we go back to our very first mountain layer, which was layer nine, which was here, use the same color, which was this first color, and I'm just gonna tentatively bring it across. I'm going to create another layer on top. Go back to my colors, and I'm gonna use this dark color here, and it's gonna be really dramatic compared to the others. I'm gonna have it at 3% size and 100% opacity. Just bring it in, it's gonna cut in front, and then I bring it up here, or down here rather, and then swing it back up, and I'll just fill it in. Now we're gonna eliminate a lot of that dark color by adding light greens over the top. So I'm gonna create a new layer on top, I'm going to go back to my colors and I've got this green here which is a really earthy quite dark green. I'm going to put it at 3% size and 30% opacity 
and I'm just going to start building in some of this green colour in here. So we've got like sloping green bits of grass. I'm not too worried about it going over the black because we're going to go over that in a moment anyway. That isn't an issue. We'll go to this next colour along, which is this more vibrant, almost more orange. But because it's greyed out, it, it gives a slight hint of green. Reduce it to 2% and we're just going to have some slightly highlighted sections here amongst this green. That is really the sun just picking up on the top edge of things. We can just bring it across here too. And I'm going to introduce it to the top edge of this black shape as well. And I'm keeping it quite rough, quite textured, quite lumpy. It's not just a smooth line, it's becoming textural. Like this. And I can start bringing in just this slightly haphazard kind of way of building up texture. I want gaps, I want some of this dark black to show through. But I want to start building in some of this light colour. And then we're going to continue to sweep it up on this side. Again, keep it quite haphazard. I'm just kind of throwing the pencil into that area, really, just letting it form the shapes that it wants to without being too contrived. I know that's difficult to do at first. I think it takes a little bit of confidence to allow that to happen. Something like this, then. I will create a new layer for this. We'll go to our colours and we've used those two. So we've got this, it's even more warm. And I can add some of this is to even more strong highlights. So I'm going to reduce the size of it down to the lower end of 2%. And it's going to be a, a little bit more specific now. Some broken sections to create like a gap, like a dark bit, and then a highlight on top. And we can continue to do individual features like that in the mix. Now texture wise, this is rather more complicated than one or two of my other tutorials. So if you're struggling a little bit, then don't worry, stick with it. And you know, honestly, there might be one or two of my other tutorials that you think perhaps are a little bit easier, but give you, you know, give yourself a chance to have a really good go at this type of thing, because it's only through really throwing yourself at it that you're going to get better at doing this. So have a good go. So I'm just creating some of these broken textures around here. The sun's going to be really impacting in this area. Again, I'm just allowing the more haphazard texture to build so this edge along here. I'm having some of this highlight, almost a really kind of squiggle-like shapes. So grass, when it gets into the distance, you're going to see more just breaks in the surface, really, rather than blades of grass, obviously. It's too far away. Then, got this really vibrant green now so we'll do that on a separate layer again and we'll put that back up to the three percent size and we just got to go a little bit more hesitant now but we're starting to build in some of this vibrant green so it's still only at the 30 percent opacity but even that maybe is a little bit strong i'll put it down to 20 percent and I'm just building in some of this really vibrant green so as it comes closer to us we're getting even more of the greens coming through allow some of the black gaps to remain, but I'm just building in more and more saturation of this green as we get a little bit closer. Allow breaks and tufts and lumps and little mounds to be suggested to appear into this closer section. Like this. Okay, create a new layer. And I think with some of these other colors, I'm gonna go back in, I'm gonna further define some extra things. So I've got this light green color, but I'm going to have to put it super low on the opacity. We'll try this about 5% size and I can just go into some of these more distant mountain shapes. I'm just doing it as a very top layer anyway, but I can just start to add a slight hint of noise and textures in the distance just to sell the idea that it's not flat, it's got features. I'm only being quite subtle with it really and even more so when it gets further away, the, the fewer and fewer things you're going to be able to identify texture-wise. And we're going to add a glow over the top of this, so it's really going to blend it all in it as well. So something like this, just as a hint, maybe along the top edge, you can just create a little bit more highlights. You don't want to go overboard with it. I've gone overboard there, so I'll just dial that back a little bit. Again, a few more into this section, just to bring out 
some little details and doing a tapping blobs, building it up gradually. Texture is one of the more difficult things because it's not a definite shape, it's not a specific thing to copy from necessarily, it's about building an effect. And I'm just doing this all over these areas now. It does take a little bit of squinting your eye, sitting back, just trying to see what works and what doesn't. And it, and it is a, it's a challenging thing to do. So don't worry too much if you're struggling. It's the kind of thing that you need practice on perhaps, and that's fine. Okay, I'm gonna create a new layer. And with my soft brush, put to 40% size and 30% opacity. I'm gonna use this orange color, but I'm gonna change the layer properties to screen and I'm going to play around with some different ways of building glow into the scene. So I've got a really large brush. I'm going to tap a few times to build in this glow. And perhaps let's even increase the size of the brush, put it up to 70%, get it really dramatically big, tap it a couple of times there. It's easy to overdo that, perhaps just dial that back a little bit. Just maybe one tap of that is enough. And it really is blowing out a lot of the areas there, but maybe it works. So perhaps I could go to the strength of the layer and just subdue it a little bit, put it more to like 70%. Maybe that's working better. But I could also go back through my layers now too. So I could find a layer that I think is perhaps a little bit too prominent. And I think that definitely exists. You can see that layer, layer 11, I think is looking too much. So I'll go to that layer, press a plus symbol above it, We'll change the properties of that new layer to lighten and we'll do something very similar. But I don't want it to fill the entire canvas now. I want it to be more localized than specific. So I'll put the brush size down to 10% and I'll just nudge away some of that darkness, just gradually start to nibble away at it. And I'll do the same over at this side as well. See whether I want to interfere with other layers. So I can move up a layer now. So now it's above layer 12 so now you can see it starts to cut in front of this one which i think is working a little better so i can subdue that too by going over it and that's working better maybe even a little bit of this section as well and you can start to just double up the impacts that it have that it has all over your scene by doing that and i think that's starting to work better i'll go to my layer 13 perhaps cut a layer above that change its properties to screen as well and maybe just a hint. So I'm gonna be more specific again. I'm gonna put it down to about 6% to keep it, well, it should be around the 10%, that's fine. And just take away a little bit of this too. So again, we'll further create the sense that this sun is really bleaching out a lot of the colors that, of you know, objects that are immediately next to it like that. So I'm gonna concentrate it specifically at that top edge there. And I think that works. So go to our top layer, create a new layer. And once you got to this point, I just think that some of these edges of these mountains need to be softened in a little bit. So I'm gonna go back through the layers and identify them and just soften them in. So if we can get to that layer, layer 12, with the eraser on the soft brush, 6% size and 10% opacity, I'm just going to soften it in here. And I'm gonna do the same with layer 11. Soften that top edge in. In fact, I'll let it disappear rather more. Layer 10, I think that's starting to work a bit better. That just softens it in, makes it look a bit more natural. Maybe just a hint for that one over there, whichever that was. Sometimes you just cut to, there you go, it's layer 12, so I'll just get rid of some of that too. I'm gonna to go to my very top layer, which has that orange color on it, create a layer above it. I'm gonna stick with this orange color, in fact, but I'm gonna turn it down to 3% size and about 3% opacity. And I'm just gonna start building in some sun rays, perhaps that are just coming from the very center of the sun outwards. And we can just build them as stripes that are coming out like this. And then you don't need to do too much of them. You can probably barely see that effect, but it is going to help. And then what I'm gonna do next is go to the layer properties. And again, we'll put it on that screen. And you can now probably see it a bit more clearly. It's creating those. If I Remove the layer, you'll see the impact that it has. It's subtle, but it does make a difference. And I was going to try out the calligraphy water pen brush, so we'll try that. I don't really like using too many different brushes, but we're gonna try it a little bit. So I'll go to this dark color and using the water pen brush, 
So we'll put it up to about 12% size and about 90% opacity. And I'm just gonna create a new layer. And with this, we can just create a suggestion of some silhouetted grass, perhaps. I don't like to do too much of this, but maybe just a hint of it here and there will help. But then generally what I want to do is use the airbrushing soft brush with these greens that we have here to start building in more texture. And I'm gonna keep it relatively rough. So I'm gonna keep it at the 2% size and about the 10% opacity and building these extra greens and just subtly start to build up. In fact, that's too subtle. Let's put it up to more like 30% and just start building in tufts and gaps with these greens. So I've got a hint of actual blades of grass there with the silhouette, but I don't want to do too much of that. And let's go for it, let's put it up to 4%. Let's just build in the, the tufts, the separations and the gaps with this main color initially. And then I can go back in with a highlighted color and just start to bring out some even smaller details, something like this. We've got two different greens. We've got a real vibrant green here. And just on the in-betweens, just, I mean, really too much of that is gonna look horrible. So just a hint of it, that's probably enough. Go to the lighter green and reduce it down to 2% size and it's still at the 30% opacity. So I have to press very lightly and I'm just building in hints of it here and adding to the general sense of texture. So maybe even smaller on the brush, 2%, lower end of 2%, just building in some slight hints of grass-like texture here as well. Now, if you want to spend ages really getting to town with this grass texture, then I do recommend you do that. But obviously for the benefit of the tutorial, I'm just trying to keep it as vague. Just get the general overall sense of the landscape and then you can play around with textures yourself and really get to grips with that. And just a hint of some things in here as well. And then we're pretty much almost there. If you want to go through the layers, just play around with the mountain shapes if you're not entirely happy with them. You can use the smudge tool, put it to a medium brush, choose an accurate size like 2%, put it up to 100% opacity, and you can just play around with some of these shapes now, just at the very end, just to really define and get it to the point that you're happy with the things that you've created. I do think that some of the shapes didn't look quite right. I did them in, you know, did them really quickly. So perhaps I'll just spend a little bit of time refining Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed following along with that tutorial. If you've had a go and you want to share that with me, make sure to tag me on Instagram or share it in my Facebook group, etc. Links for my TikTok, Instagram and Facebook group are all down in the video description. Give this video a thumbs up. It really helps it out on the YouTube algorithm and I shall catch you back here soon. See you later. Bye now.